and welcome to the Exceptional Conservative Network, an American conservative exploration of the inspired Word of God. I am your host, Ken McClinton. Uh, today we're going to talk about the clarity that I seek, spirituality, uh, or the spiritually facing decoys, doubt, and, destruction, and distractions, forgive me. Um, In our daily lives, there are so many of us who are going through many challenges in our faith. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ talked with us directly on how we might face our issues of life, our greatest concerns of living, while in a pronounced state, uh, being able to uh, seek his face daily and so this particular morning I want you all to understand without a shadow of a doubt God wants us to deal with the issues of life and to understand them fully according to his precious will and in doing so understanding that no matter what comes our way First and foremost, he's always with us, number one. But also number two, that anything that's in our mindset can be changed in a moment by uncovering his word in our lives. I want us to begin this particular morning as we go on in terms of an American conservative's exploration of the inspired Word of God with prayer that we may be able to see God this particular day not only in the things that we think not only in the things that we say but in how we do that changes everything about us. Would you join me in prayer this particular morning as we go forward? Lord Jesus, thank you this particular day for your presence in our lives. You are our holy God. You are our Redeemer. You are our friend when we have our greatest needs and you Lord are there with us always I ask you right now Lord God for your help to bless the words that I speak this particular day and that they may be acceptable in thy sight for you truly are my rock and my redeemer Lord God I want to know you better I want to know you better and I want to live better I want to be a better person, not because of anything that I say, think, and do, but because of everything that you have said, everything that you have done, and how you think about me. Lord God, I need to know you. I ask for the forgiveness of my sins and my transgressions against you. I ask for your direction. I ask that you lead and guide me into all truth this day. I ask, Father God, that you lay out for me a clear pathway. That the words that I study this particular day, your holy word, not only edify me, Lord God, but illuminate my mind and inspire me to overcome the world. That I can see through Christ Jesus that I have not only the opportunity to worship you in the beauty of holiness, but also the opportunity to know you as my friend. Lord God, where there is a lack of clarity, when there is a moment, Father God, when I cease to do thy will, I ask that you guide me back through your Holy Spirit to you. Lord God, when I say things, Father God, that are apart from your word 
I ask the Lord God that your Holy Spirit lead me back to you. And Lord Jesus, I ask this day that those things that I think may they be grafted on the firm foundation of your spirit and your truth that I might have a clarity a sureness Father God that is summed up in whom you are and who I am in you in your master's name Lord God lead me and guide me this day in your study in Jesus name we say Amen I want you to know that clarity is a wonderful thing to pursue and in fact for many of us there are clouds in our lives in the term clarity the actual origin of that particular word can be found in the Latin term here uh, claritus and it means to to be bright it means to have splendor we serve a God that is so great a risen king that is so glorious that as the only begotten son of Jesus Christ I mean the only begotten son of God Jesus Christ came to save us and to make us free one of the many problems that we have in terms of studying his word and finding ourselves approved is we face darkness darkness that comes from that which is evil in our lives as we continue with the Sermon on the Mount study of Jesus Christ we want to take a look at Matthew 6 22 and Matthew 6 23 and there our focus will be for the remainder of this particular episode in the scriptures it is written the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness well it's kind of an easy question when we think about it I mean if we think on these particular things and we ask ourselves if we are still caught up an evil thought how can our eye see Christ clearly how can we love each other more how can we be better so there are basically three things that we face that that causes us to uh, actually suffer spiritually and remove from us the clarity that we seek now firstly there are decoys doubts and distractions there are decoys in our lives which are temptations there are doubts that bring us fear 
and their distractions that keep us from having a clear mind. One of the greatest understandings or undertakings when we study the word is to understand that the greatest minefield is the mind itself. The battle is taking place in the mind and in the hearts of men. Good morning, Claudia. God bless you. Glad to have you here. Our minds are at battle every single moment of the day. At battle because Quite frankly, it is far easier to do evil than it is to do good. It's very simple. It is far easier to be against God than to be for Him. It is far easier to doubt His Word. Far easier to be tempted and to fall into the decoys that come our way. far easier for us to be distracted by those things that are happening around us that keep us from focusing solely and singularly on Christ. So I want to go through those particular things with you this particular day, but let me retouch on the concept of clarity. In the sense of what clarity is, we want to make certain Of what we know. Now, figuratively, uh, the term clarity can be a focus on celebrity. It can be on fame or renown. You see, clarity is that concept in the Latin of being a star, of being bigger than who you are. And often, when we study the Word of God, Men followed Christ because of his stardom, his fame, but not following him because of his word. When we look at the Latin term claris, I want you to understand that clarity requires us to be clear on some things. I think for a lot of us when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior it was very easy for us to accept him because we weren't really clear on him. I, 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 I know. See, all you need to do is go to church. All you need to do is be in the choir. Sing a few songs. Prayer, pray. Are you but we weren't very clear on who God is. We weren't very clear on what God's purposes were. We weren't very clear on what God expected of us. And we weren't very clear of what we were supposed to do in terms of a kingdom experience. When we lack clarity it makes us very difficult to represent Christ as his ambassador here on earth. So I want us to go, as we study this particular day, his word. And I want you to understand that God says every single moment of this particular day, I want to make this plain and I want to make this clear to you. I am your father. And we might go on with the prayer, but I am here for you. I sent my son as a bridge to you, and my spirit as a tool, a human or a person tool, to lead you to be. So God the Father has outstretched arms towards you. But this is what happens anytime you cross a bridge. Sometimes there's fog. Sometimes there are impediments. 
the bridge of Christ is certain and sure, but sometimes getting to that bridge is a very difficult challenge. Let us take a look at what light is in terms of this particular scripture. We're going to be looking at the um, Strong's Concordance, and we use that for those who are tuning in and you're at the exceptional conservative show dot com the exceptional conservative show dot com you can go there you can click on blue letter bible and it will take you uh... to a very wonderful tool internet tool that you can use to get to where you need to be uh... in addition there's the online etymology dictionary that is there for you to study what words really meant in the time that jesus christ was speaking now in the sense of matthew six twenty two one of the words that is first looked at today if we're looking at clarity is the term light and I want you to take a look at that in terms of G3088 okay and we'll try that just once more Strong's G three thousand eighty eight. Luchmas. 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 When we study that particular word, the term really means lamp candle that is placed on a stand or candlestick. A lamp candle that's placed on a stand or candlestick and I know in today's modern era that the concept of having a candlestick uh, has lost its importance I mean literally we can pick up our cell phones and there's a little light on it you can click on that light and then BAM you can see the world Literally, there are electric lights all over the place. You can turn lights on, no problem. But I want you to get a concept of what Jesus is speaking of right now, or at least then, for the right now. Literally, what he's saying is the light on a candlestick, and in that particular day and time uh, where there was no indoor bathroom. Uh, you depended on that candlestick, that light, to go before you, and you put it and you led it around, you moved it around, leading you and guiding you to where you were destined to be. So that candlestick got you to where you needed to be in the darkness. I mean, because really, in the light, who needs it? But in darkness, that lamp, that candlestick, allowed you to see the impediments before you so that you would not step on anything or anyone. That light, or in this particular scripture, and the light of the body. I want you to understand that he's not only talking to you in a uh, individual circumstance in terms of metaphor, the light of the body, meaning you, the, the, the host, the light of the host, okay, but also he's looking at the church as well. He's speaking to the ecclesia, the called out one. He's saying that that light that you depend on to lead you and to guide you in the darkness so that you do not fall forward or hurt yourself nor drop the candle causing a flame uh, in where you are but literally for the body it's the eye it is the eye and so let me give you uh, 
uh, in terms of scripture. Uh, let me let me just point you back real quick to a scripture when it comes to the light. I want to take you to Second Peter one verse nineteen. Second Peter one verse nineteen. In that particular scripture, Peter is writing to the early church, and he says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day start arise. In your hearts. Why is Peter writing that? What Peter is referring to in terms of the word of prophecy is the holy word of God. And what he's saying to us is that we are to take heed of his word. His word should be a lamp as unto our feet. Well, he's also referring to the term prophecy there. Now, I know a lot of people have turned prophecy into hocus pocus. But I want you to understand in that particular Greek term, what exactly is being referred to here. That's G4397. G4397. Strong's G4397. Prophetikos. 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 And in that particular scripture, it is proceeding from a prophet. Proceeding from a prophet. And so, what exactly proceeds from a prophet? Well, when we look at Revelations, okay, um, and we study the term prophecy. We understand that all prophecy is of Christ Jesus. Let's take a look at Revelation 19:10. Revelation 19:10. Let me put that in the chat row here at the Exceptional Conservative Show .com. When we read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, then the word that points to the spirit of Jesus or points to Jesus would also be prophetic. And in that sense, we are to be worshiping one another. We need to have clearness of focus. Our focus should not be on worshiping pastors or apostles or teachers or prophets or evangelists. It should not be on worshiping each other. But our focus, our clearness, our brightness, that lamp that comes before us, and we place our feet in front of us because of the lamp and the light that shines and guides us. It cannot be those things that we see, but it has to be those things that point to that which we cannot. A lamp is under my feet. Let's take a look at Revelation 22, verse 7, real quick. Jesus is speaking in Revelations at this point. And he says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he. that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. 
the book entitled Revelations, John writes. But I want you to understand, as we prepare to go to break, that God is saying to us right here and right now, without a shadow of a doubt, if you keep my word, it shall be a lamp as unto your feet. When we come back, we're going to focus on decoys. We're going to focus on distractions. And we're also going to focus on doubt. Three things that keep us from the illumination that comes with the word of God. The clarity that I seek. Spiritually facing decoys, doubts, and distractions. It's a love story like no other. From God's heart to yours. And for 30 years, it's been at the heart of every book, Bible, CD, gift, and resource from ChristianBook.com. Over 500,000 products, always at the very best value. ChristianBook.com. Everything Christian. Because it's our story, too. Welcome back to an American Conservative's exploration of the inspired Word of God. I'm your host, Kim McClinton. So glad to have you here this morning. So glad to have Claudia in our chat room. You can always join us in our chat. Uh, in fact, by going simply to the exceptionalconservativeshow.com and you can click on Bible study, the tab, and when you click on that Bible study, it brings you directly into what we're doing today. And what we do in that state-of-the-art chat room is giving you the very notes for today's Bible study that you might be able to study and show yourself approved. I want you to understand that today our focus is on the clarity that I seek. We seek God's Word, and God's Word makes things very plain and very clear for us. Why is it that we doubt? Why is it that we are distracted? Why is it that we face decoys? Let's go through in terms of explanation what those particular things are. At least in terms of what they meant in his particular day. The sense of what a decoy is. Okay, and that is a noun. Person, place, or thing. The, the reason why we focus on decoy here is because there are instruments used by those to keep you from becoming everything that you need to be. Okay. Uh, it comes from the Latin, uh, well, actually, the, the verb of it uh, comes from the Latin and the, as well as the noun, forgive me. And it means cage. That's exactly what it means. It comes from the Latin cavia, meaning cage. Literally, decoys keep us caged. They keep us tied down. When we look at the term of what a decoy is, uh, we can easily see that there are some things in our lives that are decoys to us. A decoy uh, is often used uh, in hunting, uh, and I, I know I have a very good friend, uh, when I was formerly on Facebook, uh, that did a lot of dunk hunt, duck hunting, and I know right now he's making some decoys in preparation for winter duck hunting um, in Idaho. Now, the reason is, while he can shoot the fowl that fly over, it is much easier to bring them closer to you so that your shot is more sure. You see, if I shoot here, I take a greater risk of missing. But if I shoot 
downward towards where the duck is. I have a greater ability of hitting that duck square. Now, I want you to understand as we study his word and show ourselves approved that God doesn't want you to be caged. He doesn't want you to be trapped. He doesn't want you to be caught up in darkness. So when we think of the term temptation, I want you to understand that God has been dealing with us in terms of temptation since the beginning of time. In fact, when we use our online definition of what it means to tempt, we can easily go back uh, to the Latin. In the Latin, temptare means to feel, to try out, attempt to influence, to test. Every single day, while it may not be spiritually Satan direct, but in terms of who we are in Christ Jesus, there is some one being a tool, a spiritual tool, to test us, to fill us out, to try us out, to attempt to influence us to get away from Jesus Christ. Now, duck hunting season again happens every single day for us. And there is someone or something that is used to draw attention away from another. Now, I'm quite certain that the ducks who get caught in the pond are angry that they fell for the decoy that led them down. They saw the pond and it looked very peaceful. Temptation is the very same way. Someone or something made us think that if we got closer to it or closer to him or her, we would be all right. We would be safe. But all that we did was we left Jesus and went to darkness. That lamp we put down for a moment so that we could face something else that we wanted. Temptation is a deadly thing. Let me take you to Psalms 95 verse 8. Psalms 95 verse 8. The psalmist writes in this particular scripture, 95, Psalm 95 8, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When we look at the term provocation, I want you to understand that Strange age, 4808. Provocation refers to <coughs> at least Mary Va. Uh, it refers to strife. It refers to contention. Now, I know a lot of people think that the church was absolutely perfect until you got there. But I want you to understand that no matter where you are, there is always strife, there is always contention. There is always something attempting to be a decoy to separate you from your singular focus on Christ Jesus. Whether it be in the church or outside of it. Whether it be a part of the body or a cancer within. So literally, our focus needs to be not on continuing in the strife and continuing in the contention, but literally putting the light before us so that we might either avoid it or his word in us that we may be able to fight it. 
Harden not your heart. As in the provocation or the strife and contention. And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. What was most tempting when the leader was away from their sight? The greatest temptation was to go back into the evil that we knew, to go back into the darkness that we knew. When we took, when we laid the candlestick down in the night, as we were opening the door of the place that we once used uh, to, as our restroom, as we put that candlestick down, sometimes the wind blows it out and we have to relight it again. Right? And we get caught up. In the day of temptation in the wilderness, when we could not see the light called Moses, people decided to make their own light called the golden calf. And so the question to me and to you this particular day is what exactly is your golden calf? What exactly is the thing that you are so decoyed by, caged up in, that you can no longer focus on God and on Jesus Christ, but it makes you feel that you're doing all the great things. It makes you feel that you're really worshiping him. I'm doing a good thing by doing this evil, by doing this darkness. And where by chance is your light? Temptation is a terrible thing to behold. And temptation comes in many forms. It comes in strife. Uh, when we look at uh, the 40 years of them being in the desert, uh, the temptation to uh, do evil, to go back, uh, to forsake God, to practice idolatry. Uh, temptation is always at us. And here's Matthew 26, 41. What exactly is the temptations that Jesus was speaking to? Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. How strong is your flesh right now? I, I know I, I have had these conversations with Melanie Collette, who is on my network here at the Exceptional Conservative Network, and... I have told her often that we need to be a body of faith that says, I need Jesus more than you. And you need to be able to respond back to me, I need Jesus more than you. My flesh is weak. I, I want to let you all know that Mrs. Biggs uh, has uh, advised me that I need to curtail my cursing. Yeah, i I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not perfect in doing all this. I, I'm still learning and I'm still trying to work some things out. My soul sanctification. I'm trying to work these things out. But my wife said, when you get under stress, uh, sometimes you curse more than you need to. Now, when she said that to me, it was along the lines of, first and foremost, it is not a practice for me to curse. But secondly, that I have allowed myself to be decoyed by those things that are in my life. I'm caged up in the challenges of running my particular network. And my reaction to it is not praising God. My reaction to it is cursing the world. My clarity, my illumination becomes darker and I can't see I gotta find my lamp I gotta find the word 
that illuminates for me exactly how God wants me to operate in his word and in his being and in doing so I can move forward more surely let's go to one other thing here and that's doubt let's put it here because I don't want to run out of time uh, but doubt Doubt is, uh, in the sense, dread of fear. From the Latin dubatar, it means to question, to hesitate, to waver in opinion, to doubt. To question, to waver in fear, and not waver in opinion, hesitate, question I went to an event yesterday uh, save our sisters uh, at the DC housing finance agency DC H F a and good morning Leslie God bless you glad to have you here and in this particular meeting the focus was on missing children specifically gender-wise, missing girls. And so many of the individuals were frustrated, they were angry, there was a group that traveled all the way from South Carolina to be at the event, uh, and they wanted to go out and find the girls that were missing uh, as if it was that easy during the course of the day to do so. Uh, because only at night will you find those who are without clarity, without focus those who are in fear or dread or doubt and they wanted an answer they wanted to make certain that they had solved a case before the end of the day I appreciate the passion I really do but here's the thing there were those who were at that meeting who were so caught up in the progressive agenda uh, the liberal politics caught up in their institutions and their organizations that they had forgotten their focus which was the missing girls and so they spent most of the time asking for money asking for uh, people's support of their organizations but I thought we were here for the missing girls Ladies and gentlemen, doubt is a dangerous thing. Doubt says, without a shadow, <laughs> if I can use that particular term, doubt says, I'm going to question that which I know is common sense. I'm going to hesitate when God tells me to do something. I waver an opinion. I don't know really if. God really intended me to do what he says I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doubt is a dangerous thing. And in fact, when we doubt, I want you to understand etymologically what we're doing. And I want you to be able to tell people exactly what's happening. When you doubt, you are choosing between two things and in Christ we're choosing between God and man we're choosing between right and wrong when you doubt you doubt the word that is before you and in doubting the word before you what you're literally saying is, hey, I know what God said, but this is what I say. I want you to think for a moment. Have you ever said that? You may not have said it out loud. You may have thought it. Or you may have done it. I know what God says, but this is what I say. When we waver in opinion or waver on God's word, we doubt. And when we doubt, we 
no longer have that lamp before us and our pathway isn't so clear. The clarity that I seek means that I don't subject myself to decoys. I don't subject myself to doubts. But here's the very last thing that we don't subtract our, don't get uh, distracted by it per se. Distractions. Literally, uh, distrahia in the Latin literally means to draw away, to be drawn away. You know, one of the most amazing things <clears throat> that happens uh, is when you're at the dessert table and there are many, many desserts that are there. And you pick up one dessert and then you get distracted because there's another dessert over here and that dessert looks so good. And so as you were getting ready to put that dessert down and reach over for the other dessert, someone came by and took that dessert. And that meant that when I went back to get the dessert that I once had, <clears throat> it was taken by someone else. So literally, I'm without a dessert. Why? Because what was in my hand, that lamp that was in my hand, I put down to reach for something else. I was drawn away and I was distracted. My focus was no longer on Christ. It was on darkness. So what is this darkness that you keep talking about, Ken? What is it that definitely tells us, without a shadow of a doubt, that we're headed the wrong way? In Matthew 6, and in the 23rd verse, this is what Jesus says during the Sermon on the Mount. But if thine eye be evil, your eye sees everything. Dave Milner is my very good friend, but he is partially blind. And I'm quite certain the challenges for him are far greater than any we could possibly face that can see. And I have glasses. But to be distracted literally means that we have chosen evil over good. What is evil? Let's make that very plain and very quick and clear to you. Evil <clears throat> is G4190 and our strongest concordance. Strong's G, 4190. Pameras. Pameras. When we look at that particular definition, evil is made up of two things full of labors and annoyances and hardships, or bad nature, bad condition. Literally, we make it hard on our own selves when we don't follow God. We become blind. We become wicked when we choose not to do His Word. We, distracted, lose God. So what is God saying to us? When we put that lamp down <clears throat> that we used to hold in darkness and we begin to walk in darkness, <clears throat> there's some things that are going to come our way. I know you don't like to hear it, but it's true. We must remain steadfast, but there are going to be toils that come our way. There are going to be perils that come our way. There are going to be trials that come our way. There will be pain and there will be suffering that will come our way. But when we pick up that light and we put it before us, 
We don't have to worry about any doubt. We don't have to worry about any distractions. We don't have to worry about any decoys. His light will light up our body and make us whole. And then we can follow him with a singular purpose of pleasing God. We'll see you next week on an American Conservative's exploration of the inspired word of God. Stay tuned for the real clear Israel. So what do you think about ebooks? Maybe you've never read an ebook before, but you're considering giving it a try. Or maybe you've been reluctant to try ebooks because you don't want to buy another expensive electronic device. Or maybe you already enjoy ebooks, but you haven't been able to find titles from your favorite Christian authors. Whatever your situation, ChristianBook.com has the solution. The trusted source for print books for over 30 years now offers ebooks. Our always free CBD reader allows you to read on the devices you already own without spending money on a new device. Thousands of Christian ebooks at ChristianBook.com means you can shop with confidence and choose from the titles you want. Plus, we are adding new titles all the time. Browse our huge selection of low priced Christian ebooks the same way you would printed books, only now you can go from shopping to reading in seconds. Simply select the ebook you wish to purchase, confirm your account information, and start reading. Free samples of every ebook are available, so you can preview the book first before you buy it. Plus, there's no lengthy app downloads and updates. Accessing the CBD Reader is as easy as going to cbdreader.christianbook.com and bookmarking the page. The CBD Reader holds your ebooks and bookmarks for you, no matter what device you're on. So, you can take your entire ebook library wherever you go and pick up right where you left off. Our customizable options make it possible to read your ebooks in different font sizes and styles. Want a large print version? You've got it in seconds with a simple click of the mouse. Already own a dedicated e-reader? Download your ebooks to your computer from your ChristianBook.com account and transfer them to your device. Try ebooks at ChristianBook.com and start reading your favorite books in seconds. Easy, economical, everywhere you want to read. Welcome to ChristianBook.com ebooks. <laughs>